all around the world, men and women, people of all ages, have witnessed the awesome manifestation of God's presence, power, and His love rendered in words, words beyond the written pages. Why are we preaching like this? Why do we travel all around the world preaching the gospel? Because Jesus is coming again. And he left us with a message to tell the untold. A message for the whole world. This message of faith in God and his unfailing word has brought about change in the lives of millions around the world. An improvement that brings many more to such meetings with the man of God, knowing that their lives will never be the same again. Today we bring you excerpts from a special meeting with our man of God, Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris, worth hearing. God's earnest desire is for you to live in abundance. But how can you enjoy the supernatural wealth God has provided for you if you don't understand how to meet your needs supernaturally? In this insightful classic, Pastor Chris shares with you vital principles of meeting your needs supernaturally. When you enter into this place in Christ, you cease from your struggles. So take your mind away from anything else as your source. The Lord is your source. Your life will be revolutionized as you open your heart to receive and practice the divine insights this message unveils to you. Meeting our needs supernaturally. Remember in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Read it for me. Want to go. <laughs> but my God shall supply all your need according to your crying, according to your wailing and weeping, according to your begging, if you can beg hard enough. My God shall supply all your need according to how serious the need is. Oh, Father, you know how serious this is. He knows how serious it is. Is that what's written in the Word? That He'll supply your need according to the seriousness? Come on, talk to me. My God shall supply all your need according to the seriousness of the situation. No. No matter how serious, you can be crying. It's not going to change anything. Look at it. But my God shall supply all your need. I'm interested in the fact that Paul didn't say all our. All our. What about him? What about Paul? Why, why, why is he talking to these babes? Can you see it? I think you've suddenly understood why he says, yo. What about him? My God. He didn't say our God. My God shall supply your need. What's going on here? My God, your need. Why does it our God shall supply all our need? Then we know this is a wonderful confession. But here's a father talking to babes. They haven't understood yet. They still have a sense of need. Can you see it? They still have a sense of need. They still have a sense of lack. And this is a godly counsel. My God shall supply. My God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My God shall supply all your need. What about me? Turn to verse 13. Verse 13. Read for me. Read for me. 
That is the I. He didn't say we. I, I can. Can you see the difference? I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. I can. No sense of need. No sense of lack. Amazing. Amazing. Look at the difference between the I and you and your. I can do all things. I can. What a mentality. What a way of thinking. You know, pastors... Sometimes you might find yourself in a situation thinking, looking at men. Because you, you, you need money. You need finances for some things. And you might be looking at those who you think have the ability to do it. Take your eyes away from men. How can I tell you this? Take your eyes away from men. Take your eyes away from men. Okay, since three of your huge financial partners stopped coming to church, you've been broke since then, and you have been angry with God since then. You almost feel like leaving the church and following them to wherever they went. <laughs> Isn't that sad? And sometimes you find two pastors angry with each other because one's church, the, the, some partners who are very, you know, they were invited to the other church. And after they were invited to the other church, they stayed. <laughs> now this pastor is upset. Then some are evangelizing partners <laughs> to win them to their church. Why do you stoop down? To human levels. Why do you stoop down to human levels? Let me tell you something. You know, during the International uh, Pastors and Partners Conference, we recognize our partners and who are our partners. They're actually all those who are laboring together with us in the gospel. Now, we recognize all of them because the Word of God tells us to recognize those who are laboring together with us in the gospel. But he never told us that they are our source. All right? No, he never said so. No. Everyone has to do what God gives them the ability to do. There's somebody close to you, wake up, brother or sister, wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. I want you to think differently. Whatever needs that the church may face, I want you to have a different mentality. Understand first and foremost that the church of Jesus Christ is a spiritual, supernatural body. And so, whatever need there is must be met supernaturally. Start thinking like that. Let me show you something. I think that last year, if you don't find it in your notes, I don't know what you were writing. But you should find this in your notes. Some of the things I'm telling you now, they were there. 
So Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 14. I want to read from verse 15. From verse 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send them out to the way that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victory. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat <laughs> in the desert. He says, Feed. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. Remember how they found that out. He had asked them to go look around for what they got. All right. Five loaves and two fishes. And we got a multitude. He said, Bring them he that to me. Bring me the five loaves and two fishes. Hmm. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. You know, there's so much to learn from Jesus. Oh boy, so much to learn. Ah. <sighs> Okay, but no, 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 go, go back there. I just want to take a little part here. The Bible says he asked for the loaves and fish, and he brought them to him. Let's see how most of us here receive the offerings. So, they bring the offerings, and we receive the offerings, right? And then we bless the people, correct? God bless you and multiply it back to you. Amen? What do we carry? The offering as it was. How many times have you blessed the offering? I'm sure not frequently. But it's the offering you're going to use. And then you find it's not enough. It, but it's not blessed. No, call almost anybody. Call, call to pray over the offering. Thank you, Lord, for the offering. They thank him for the offering and pray for the blessing of the people that give it. That's all. That's the content of the prayer, most, mostly. No one really blesses the offering. Now, the next thing is about what is the blessing. Now, the word used for Jesus blessing the bread and fish here Greek eulogio, meaning that he spoke words of empowerment, meaning that he invoked the ability to prosper into the bread and the fish. It was an invocation of power. For the bread and the fish to prosper. And that means to multiply, to increase, and to do what it was sent to do. You do what I'm telling you. You will be amazed. You, I guarantee you, that you will be amazed. You will be amazed when you receive the tithes and the offerings. You pray over the money and say in the name. Now there, there's power in our words. I'll talk a little about that. There's power in our words. We've got the power to invoke the Spirit of God into the money, into the offerings. 
into whatever it is that's been brought to the house of God for God's use. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I invoke into these offerings the power to prosper, the power to increase. I command you to multiply in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the things that we need to do. And you will be more than enough in Jesus' name. Jesus blessed the bread and the fish. He invoked the power, the ability to multiply. Now go back to that verse. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Now, and they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. 12 baskets full. It was more than enough. There was extra. From the day I decided that I was always going to have abundance, I have had abundance. From the day I decided. From the day I decided, I've always had more than enough. Always more than enough. Always more than enough. And that's what you want, right? That's what you want to see. You don't want to see something that's different. You don't want to see yourself, you know, trying to meet up. I don't like the idea of trying to meet up, you know, being from behind and trying to catch up. No, 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 no. A thousand times no. 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 You know, the idea of having uh, uh, debts, things you're supposed to pay, and then you're behind, you know. Somebody says, you know, there are lots of demands, there are lots of needs. The problem is not the demands. The problem is how much you have. You have too little. That's your problem. You don't have enough to meet up with the things that you have to do. That's a problem. You're coming from behind. It's not, it's not the demands that are too many. It is what you are having that is too small. Because there are others who are meeting up with those same demands and more and doing much more. Why can't you be that person who says you can't be? Why can't you be? When are you going to be? When you choose to be. Yes. There are rules to the game. There are rules to the game. When you choose to be and you play according to the rules, that's it. That's it. You'll be completely out of the class of the, oh God, oh God, I, I need, oh God, please give me, give me, give me. You'll be out of that class forever. Forever. Hi. So, believe me, it, it's not what a pastor needs to do that's too much for him. Oh, it's simple. If it's too much for you, quit. <laughs> that's it. That, no, we don't have to negotiate. Quit. If it's too much for you, quit. Simple. simple. And I'm bold enough to tell anybody that. I, I'm, I have that boldness. You say, um, this thing is to us. Quit. Since God can't pay your bills, adieu. Bye. You can call the government. You want a job. They will pay. Call a company somewhere. Tell them to give you a job because God can't pay. It's 
See, you've been preaching. You know, that sometimes they say that there are some pastors who are really struggling. They're doing a lot, but they don't have the finances. That condition will continue until the day you choose to believe the Bible. I'm telling you. Because you think you believe, but true believing is doing. If you don't act it, you don't believe it. Oh, oh, come on now. Come on now. Let, let's, 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 read some, let's read some scriptures, right? Can we read some scriptures? Okay. Oh, I, I, I'm teaching currently in church. I, I'm teaching in church Sunday, Sundays and Wednesdays the integrity of the word. Okay? And um, the reason I said that is when you read the Bible, what goes through your mind? Does it mean what it says, or are these just relics of past imaginations? Are these things so? Does God expect us to trust these? Haggai, book of Haggai, chapter 2. Let's start reading from verse number 6. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah! Woo! Oh! Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, boy. Wow. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. New National Version. Let me pick the New International Version. To be helpful. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and the desired of all nations will come. Hmm. You know what it's talking about? It's talking about money. It's talking about money. Finances. This is what nations are looking for. This is what they want. The desire of all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory. <laughs> says the Lord Almighty. Now, notice, I want you to notice the term, this house. He wasn't talking about a house in the future. They were building the house of God. Now, remember, Nehemiah, Ezra, Haggai, Zerubbabel, Joshua, not Joshua uh, from Moses. These were contemporaries. Okay? These were contemporaries. And they lived about the same period. And uh, Haggai was the prophet. Ezra was the priest, the scribe. Okay? And at the time of writing, Hagar charged the people of some of the wrongs they had done. He was dealing with what was happening in the house. Things that were slowing down the building of the temple. Why did it take so long? Now, Ezra, on the other hand, was dealing with the external aggressors who tried to slow down the building of the temple. He wasn't concerned about what was going on inside because he was just, I mean, he was the priest, the scribe, but it took the prophet who knew what was going on inside to charge the people that they were doing the wrong thing. He said, you're, you've left the house of God and you're building your own houses. All right? So, and, and after he had reprimanded them and they chose to repent, then he brought the word to them for their prosperity. So he was talking about the house of God that they were building at the time. So he says, this house, not the house, but this house. I have a reason for 
emphasizing that. All right, let's go. I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. Verse 8. The silver. Oh, hi. Oh. Woo. Come on. The silver. No, no, no. It's for our senior partners. <laughs> the silver is for the politicians. Come on now. The silver is for the central bank. The silver is mine. And the gold <laughs> is mine, declares the Lord of God. Does the word mean what it says? Okay, so if it's true that the silver belongs to him and the gold belongs to him, why are you not having enough? Does that mean that he's holding it from you? Ask those that have enough. No, you have some around you who are always swimming in abundance. Right? They always meet their needs. So you can ask and say, brother, how are you doing yours? He'll tell you, if you stick with the word, you know it. <laughs> yeah, you'll come back with the testimony. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. Mm -hmm. The glory of this present house. Now, when you read in the King James, it says, of this latter house, not the glory of the latter house. The glory of this latter house, meaning this house after the first one that was destroyed. This house. This is the latter house. He is not talking about the glory of the latter house. The glory of this latter house. This one you are building. This latter house. That's why I emphasized the word this in the previous verse for you. Look at it now. Read your translation. It's there. It's this house. I'm saying that because a lot of times you hear the, the, the prophecy, okay? When these words are given in prophetic language, it is often said, the glory of the latter house. And we have the tendency to always put it into the future. Like we're going to build a latter house somewhere, you know? There's this future that we're looking at. No, it's this latter house. That's why the NIV lets you understand it is this present house. This present, not the former, but this one. Hallelujah. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Wow! Amazing, 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 amazing. What house are you building? You declare, I make all things new in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm moving to the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you're still in the building. You're not through yet. You're constructing this present house. So don't push it into the future. What you're doing now needs to surpass the past. It needs to. You've seen new ideas. Now you're going to change the materials in the house. Am I right? You're upgrading everything. Because the glory of this house must surpass the former. In the previous vision, you, had, you were going to do it like this. You were going to do it like this. But now, your eyes have opened. You are upgrading it. 
You are changing the levels. You know, as thoughts come to you, you have those thoughts that will try to keep you where you've been. Try to calm you down, be where you've been. No, you're going to say, no, 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 a thousand times no. No, 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 no. You're moving forward. You're surging forward. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 26. I want to read from verse 1. I'm going to speed through it into the, the verses I really want to get to. You shall make you no idols, nor graven images, neither ray up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. He says, no idolatry. Okay? Don't serve anything else. Serve me. That's what God is saying. He says, only serve the Lord God. Not anything else. So take your mind away from anything else as your source. The Lord is your source. Close your eyes for a second. Lift your hand and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare the Lord God is my source. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord God is my source. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, what's the reading? Next verse. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Mm -hmm. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then, huh, these are the blessings of doing the Word. You see, we're not given the Ten Commandments and the associated commandments from Moses, but he gives us the Word to live by. All right? So we live in God's Word today. We do His Word. And then he says, look at this. These are just some of those blessings. I want you to look at this with your mind. Review what he's saying here. Just walking in consistency with his word. Look at the blessings. It says, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. It's just starting. <laughs> and your threshing shall reach on to the vintage, and the vintage shall reach on to the sowing time, and you shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land. I, so God can give peace. Amazing. What land is he talking about here? Listen, don't start thinking about your land in the in, in, uh, uh, Republic of Benin or, uh, you know, uh, or your state. No, we're spiritual. We're a spiritual king. You are living in God's land. Are you hearing me? And it, it matters. That's why I told you, live in God's word. It matters where you live. Yes, sir. There are different streets. It matters where you live. Look at this. And I'll give peace in the land, and it shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. Fear vanishes when you live in this land I'm talking about. The promised land was not a type of heaven. It's a place in God. It's our place in Christ. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. No demons will be there. Glory to God. 
But are you aware that there are many Christians who are calling and crying for deliverance that they're being attacked by demons? They're still attacked by evil beasts. They have evil beasts in their land. What's happening? They are living in the wrong land. Praise the Lord. When you enter into this place in Christ, you cease from your struggles. Look at that. I will read evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. <laughs> and ye shall chase your enemies. So you see, he's, he's, not, he's not going to chase them out for you. Did you see that? But he will put your fear on them. <laughs> and ye shall chase your... Ah, yeah, yeah. He shall chase your enemies. And they shall fall before you by the sword. I thought he just said, sword will not go through your land. What he's talking about is you will not be defeated. He says you will chase them. You will chase your enemies. Have you ever been in that place where several people, all they just, their language is constantly a language of want and lack? I don't have this, I don't have that. We can't do this, we can't do that. We need, we need, we need, we want, we want, we don't have, we don't have, we can't do, we can't do. Have you, I bind that spirit in Jesus' name. That's what you do. Have you been hearing that kind of stuff? No, no, no. You say, I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. You have no place in this church. You have no place here. Chase your enemies. Give them no opportunity. He shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. Glory to God. And our sword is what? The word. The rhema of God. That's the sword we use. And they shall fall before us. Hallelujah. Next. And fight. I'll show you something more about this. Okay. The change. And five of you shall chase an hundred. And an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Next verse. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. Now you understand what it says. God is no respecter of persons. People don't understand that. They say that there's no favoritism with God. They don't understand that. Somebody even said that God doesn't have favorites. No. You don't understand it. He's got favorites and I'm one of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. How can you say, how can you say there's no favoritism with God? Who told you that? Didn't you hear of the abundant grace? The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I'm his favored one. Ah, he says, for I will have respect unto you. That means you're special. That's what he's saying. How, how can you stay there and say, uh, uh, God doesn't have any special. That means you don't know me. I'm one of God's very special ones. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Say I'm special. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I know who I am. <laughs> Glory to God. I will have respect unto you. Hey, that means he's thinking about me. He's thinking about me. He's thinking about me. 
He's always thinking of how to do something special for me. <laughs> I will have respect unto you and make you. He's got the power to do it. Can he do it? I'm talking the integrity of the word. Does he have the ability to do it? Can we trust him? He says, I will make you fruitful. Can he do it? I'm fruitful. He has made me fruitful. He says, I will make you fruitful and multiply you. Oh, Lord. No, look at this. This first half of the year, think about all the outreaches and crusades everywhere. Now, I remember a few years ago, 2001, 2002, when the pastors got mad around here, you know, and they were, Pastor Chris, this is the Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris. They didn't know they were about to see many Pastor Chris. <laughs> now they can't even keep up with this. And you know what? We are only just beginning. <laughs> only just beginning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at that. He says, I will make you. When God says, I will make you, it takes the struggle out. I don't have to try to do it. He does it. I'm fruitful, fruitful, very fruitful. He says, I'll make you fruitful and multiply you. And establish my covenant with you. Next verse. And he shall eat old store <laughs> and bring forth the old because of the new. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Why, why you're still with the old one, the new one has come. I mean, you just, what's going on here? See, you think you've got to live from month to month, you know. All the, all the money for this month is finished. Then you're believing God for the next month. Believing God. Did you ever hear that? We are believing the Lord for... You are believing the Lord for what? Who, where did you get that language? We are believing the Lord to, to do what? That's your own belief on rampage. But just because you have made it sound religious, you think it's nice. You think it's a church language. We are believing the Lord for, for more money. We are believing the Lord that uh, he will help us finish the construction. We are believing the Lord for a new place. You are believing the Lord for a new place. You are believing the Lord. You are believing the Lord for a new place. When will this believing Come to be faith. Where you say we have a new place. <laughs> but believing the law. Listen, let me show you something. I've tried to go back to that. Go back to the ninth verse. Let me show you something. He says, For I will have respect on you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. Now imagine this. Oh, Lord, you said you will make me fruitful. Make me fruitful is your promise. You promised, oh. You promised, oh. Unbelief in demonstration on her knees. Praying unbelief. Unbelief. Make us fruitful. You said you would make us fruitful. You said you would make us fruitful. 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 <laughs> You might think that is prayer because you are crying. So as you are crying, you're like, make us fruitful. <laughs> make us fruitful. You said you would multiply us. Multiply us. Multiply us. Multiply us. Multiply us. <laughs> it will sound like you are really praying. All that time, the angels around you are waiting for you to get off of your knees. They are very offended. The Bible says, in Christ Jesus, 
all the promises of God are yes and in him amen that's all in Christ there are no more promises they are all yes and amen what does that mean put the scripture back up there when you read stuff like this I will have respect unto you that's what God said make you fruitful and multiply you wow oh lord that means you've made me fruitful oh that means you've multiplied me oh lord come here when you see a corn seed an orange seed and you put it on your hand imagine the farmer praying <laughs> oh god Make this seed to multiply. Uh oh. No. Put the seed in the right environment. Plant it in the soil. He told us to go into the world and win souls. It is in me. I win souls. I have the power, the ability. So it's in me. Once I go out, I am coming back with my sheaves. Can you see that? He has made me fruitful. It's in me. That gift of multiplication is at work in me. It's there already. The word shows me what he's done. Because his promises have been fulfilled. Listen, Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus is the fulfillment of all God's promises. He is the fulfillment of God's promises. Understand it. Jesus is the fulfillment. It's all done in Christ. It is finished. Once you see a promise in the Word from God, then you say, glory to God. That's mine in Christ Jesus. He's not going to fulfill it. It was fulfilled in Christ. Are you following what I'm telling you? This is the gospel. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, go back to verse 10 and then, uh, and he shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. Mm -hmm. Next verse. And I will set my tabernacle among you. Okay, all right. Are you going to ask him to set his tabernacle among you? Have you not become his tabernacle? <laughs> you see the point? He has made you his living tabernacle. So you can ask him now to set it up among you. Lord, come dwell among us. He's done better than that. He's done better than dwelling among us. He dwells in me. And I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you. Oh no, how could he? He doesn't abhor us. He loves us so much. He lives in us and has made us one with him. Hallelujah. And I will walk among you. Now he walks in us, not just among us. Hallelujah. And I will be your God. And he shall be my people. Did you see that? Are you going to pray? Oh, be my God. You said you will be my God. Do you pray like that? No. So why do you pray like that in the other way? It's all fulfilled in Christ. Jesus said to my father and your father, my God and your God. Say, I ascend to my father and your father, my God and your God. Not to my father and who will, who will soon become your father. <laughs> to my God and who will soon become your God. Is that what he said? No. He has become our father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, verse 13. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that he should not be their bondman. Hi. 
He says, I brought you out of Egypt that you should not be slaves. He doesn't want any one of us to be a slave. He doesn't want any one of us to be in lack and want. Look at his idea. He said, I brought you out of Egypt that you should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke. Hi! And made you to go upright. Hey! Hey! In other words, I didn't want you stooping down. He said, I broke the yoke. So you can stand up straight. Chest out. Chin up. Because you are somebody special. Glory to God. Woo! Hi. Glory to God. Think about it. How he loves us. Isaiah, book of Isaiah, chapter 60. This is amazing, wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to read to you from verse 17. Where'd you live? Where'd you live? Where'd you live? For brass. <laughs> I will bring what? Gold. For iron, I will bring what? Silver. For wood, brass. And for stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace and thine exactness righteousness. Hi. Think about this. Next verse. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting not destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy words salvation. And I gave praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. The Lord is my glory. <laughs> Hallelujah, the Lord is my glory. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Next verse. Thy sun shall no more go down. There will always be light. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be what? Ended. They are gone forever. All right, look, next. Thy people also shall be all righteous. How many unrighteous members do you have? When they were born again, they became righteous. Right? That people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planning, the work of my hands. Oh, I'm the work of God's hands. I'm a success. Because he made me. Did you ever read? We are the workmanship of God. That's it. The work of my hands that I may be glorified. We are the works of his hands. We are his workmanship. That's what that means. Ah! Next verse. A little one shall become what? And a small one Think about that. Do you understand this? He says, a little one shall become what? A thousand. In other words, when you're thinking about the little ones, it's a thousand. Then he says, a small one, a strong nation, which means before you become a thousand, before you become a thousand, you are very strong. You are a strong nation. So you don't say, you know, uh, you know we are very small. Um, our, church, our church is just... Uh, uh, 50 people, we can't do much. Uh, you know, uh, we are still very small. He says, a small one shall be what? A strong nation. So what should the pastor be saying to their brethren there? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
hold on, brethren, you know, uh, there are many big churches that can do a lot of things, but because we are still very small, then we can't do a lot. We are very small, you know, we are small. Is that what you tell them? You say, look at us. We are a strong nation going on God. Strong nation. I won't come to church apologizing. Uh, you know, we are just, uh, we are just, uh, we are still 55 members. We are, we are few. We are small. We, we, we can't even have Dickens from our church yet. We are very small. We are very small. We, 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 we don't have partners yet. We are very small. A uh, uh, small one shall be what? A strong nation. So you come to church and say, We are a strong nation going at God. a strong nation. That means we are powerful. That means we are influential. That means we are effective. That means we are rich. Shout amen somebody. Yeah. I know who I am. Sit down. Hallelujah. Glory. Does the word mean what it says? Is the word trustworthy? Yes. Can you walk in this light? Yes, sir. The word of God is light. Can you walk in this light? That's the question. Do you realize he's talking to you? Do you realize this is for you today? Do you realize it means you? He said, I just heard, I just heard what he said. Does he mean me? Yes, he means you. He means you. It's time to use words now. It's time to use words. It's time. It's time. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Use words. 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 It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Open your mouth. Don't be quiet. Open your mouth. And speak. It's time to use words.